by looking at the materials and the shapes and the forms, you can see the progression of the history of sculpture in these different works. The sale includes three beautiful Rodin bronzes. The first of these is the Thinker, or Le Penseur, which was developed from the Gates of Hell commission that preoccupied him for a large part of his life. The Penseur by Rodin is one of the most famous sculptural images known today. It's become a symbol of man and creativity. It really shows how he infuses emotion into his sculpture. One of the other great images by Rodin we have is a really lovely early lifetime cast from prior to 1894. This is a work that is important because it records the composition in its first state. The final bronze by Rodin is the Désespoir Grand Modèle, and this is, like the other two pieces, a work taken off the gates of hell and adapted. Here what's so extraordinary is that Rodin has incorporated both marble and bronze into a single composition, offsetting the rough-hewn rock against the very smooth forms of the female figure that speaks of the angst that she's experiencing. We have three sculptures by Picasso in the sale. These are actually all in different materials and show the limitless imagination and fun that Picasso had in developing these compositions. The lot that kicks off the sale is La Chouette, a little ceramic sculpture of an owl that he's hand-painted. Another piece is the Jeune Homme, and this is really just created out of found scraps of wood. It really shows the fun and joy that he was having towards the end of his life. The greatest of the Picasso works we're offering is the Tet, the maquette for a monumental sculpture that was eventually scaled up and installed outside the Chicago Civic Center in the mid-60s. Other sculptures in the sale include a very beautiful nude by Aristide Maiol and a bronze by Julio Gonzalez, which is a composition that he created in the 1930s from a period when he was very much developing new techniques in sculpture. Finally, to round off with the group, there's a beautiful work from the end of Henry Moore's career, which seems to hark back to works that he created in the 1930s.